Congratulations on the purchase of your XT12. In this short video, I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step instruction on how to set it up ready for camping. First thing you do before you uncouple your caravan from your vehicles, find a good level spot to set up. Put down the jockey wheel, apply the handbrake and raise the coupling off the vehicle with the jockey wheel. If there's any slope at all, you need to chock the wheels of your caravan, preferably front and back, make sure it can't roll. Once that's done, use the jockey wheel to level your caravan from a front to back aspect. Now we've leveled our van with the jockey wheel, it's time to put the stabiliser legs down. What you'll need is this brace, it'll be packed in the forward boot when you pick up your caravan. To lower the stabiliser leg, pull the blue handle out and lower the leg into position. Give it a wiggle and make sure the blue handle clips back in and locks in place. Ideally, you want the stabiliser leg in a vertical position. Sometimes the ground won't allow you to, so you'll have to set it up on an angle. Just be cautious when it's on an angle, don't overextend it, because you can actually bend components. To lower it, put the brace on the hex drive and simply wind it down in an anti-clockwise motion. wind it down firm on the ground and do that with all four. There's one in each corner of the caravan. Before hopping in the van, we need to put the step down. To do so, there is a bar at the back of the step. Push down on the bar and pull the step forward and nudge it down into place and it's ready to go. When opening up the caravan, there's a number of these little gold linch pins that secure the over center latches. There's four on the roof and there's also four that secure the spare wheel holders from dropping down. Also, there's two of these safety pins through the actual vertical shaft of the spare wheel carrier that need to be removed as well, and they're secured by these linch pins as well. So remove all of those before you start opening the caravan up. Now with all our linch pins removed and the over centre locks unlatched and the safety pins removed, I can drop the spare wheels down. Nice and light, they're easy to do. Our next step to open up the back is to undo these latches across the bottom of the rear panel. This panel is what forms the roof of the extension. Pop that up. These little clips here, you push the top, bring the tab out and turn them. They go out to make our wing panels. Now the roof's supported. To lower the back of the bed section, there's latches on top corners both sides. Just step up on the spare wheels, press the buttons, and just lower it down. The rear window panel is on a gas strut. Grab the handle, bring it up, just get the latches down out of the way. Pull it all the way out and pop the over centre latches back onto their tongues and lock it in place. As an extra security measure, you can put a small padlock through these and that'll stop anyone opening this up and trying to get into the back of the caravan. At each corner of the roof, there's an over centre latch. You need to make sure all four are undone before you raise the roof. So undo it, pop it up out of the way. Two at the front, two at the back. When opening the roof, always start at the front. So raise the front first, push up on the bar, all the way up. And just up in the corner here is a little chrome tab. Put that round in front of the plate and that will secure it. Do the same at the back. Roll. To set up the electric awning, the first step is to turn the power on here at the front control box. Power's on, then this switch here, which is marked toilet and awning, needs to be switched on to send power to the awning actuation switch, which is located just next to the kitchen. The control switch for the awning is just here above the kitchen on the left hand side. Simply flick it to open and the electric awning will start to extend. As the awning comes out, if it's a bit windy, you might just wanna keep a little hold on it, make sure the wind can't get control of it and damage it. But as it comes out, 
and the legs are within reach, what you can do, reach up, pull the hinge end out, pull the leg out of its holder, and extend the leg down. There's two ways you can do this. You can put the legs down and peg them into the ground to secure them, or you can run them back to the white clips on the side of the caravan and make it self-supporting with the legs up out of the way. Get our second leg out and we'll put this one on the side of the van. Pop the leg in the bottom first, push the white cap down to secure it and extend your awning up. Lock the leg into place. Now I can put the other leg on the side of the caravan. Again, bottom first, cap down, and get our awning to the right height. It's that easy. Once your gas is connected up and you're ready to start your trim or hot water system, the first thing you need to do is come out and open up the flue cover out here. This main cover is actually an MDC item, so it's additional thing to keep the dust away from your Truma hot water flue and also prevent damage when you're out four wheel driving. To remove this cover, put your thumbs in that position there, grab the tab on the top and twist and pull, and that cover will come straight off. Now, we're ready to go inside and start the hot water system at the control switch. The control switch for the Truma hot water system is up the back here, just in front of the bed. It's a three position rocker switch. The middle position is off. If you flick the switch up by pressing the top of the button, that will select 60 degrees. If you switch down, that will select 70 degrees. The Truma automatically ignites, so provided your gas is on, your flue is open, it will auto ignite. It will take some time for the gas to bleed through. So when you switch it on, wait for a while, let it try and ignite, and when the red light comes on, that means the gas hasn't quite purged and it's failed to start. When that happens, flick it back to the center position, give it a few moments, then flick it back to the setting you want and continue that until it ignites and the red light stays off. After about 10 or 15 minutes, Go and hold your hand near the flue and make sure there's warm air still coming out and check that it's still running just in case there was any air trapped further in the line. And that is how you set up your XT12 ready for camping. But remember the golden rules, don't force anything. If you feel resistance, check out why it's happening.